Hello scholars, Ms. Jane's here and I'm going to help you with your first grade skills lesson. Today we're on lesson 12 of unit 4. Our objectives today are to identify sound and spellings for short vowels, long vowels, and our controlled vowels, read some decodable phrases, Identify and use common and proper nouns in past and present tense verbs. And read with purpose and understanding to answer questions about a text. Let's start by reviewing the vowel sounds we learned last year in kindergarten. Okay, make sure you're saying these sounds with me. Repeat after me. A says A. Ah. E says a. I says I. O says ah. U says a. Uh. Good job! Let's get into our long vowel spellings that we learned about earlier this year. When we add an E at the end of a word, it changes the vowel sound that we hear. So when we add the E at the end, we have A consonant E. That A is now going to say its own name. So if we see A consonant E, we're going to say A. If we see I consonant E, we're going to say I. If we see O consonant E, we're going to say O. Remember that magic E changes the vowel sound. So we no longer hear A or I or A. Ah. Now they say their own name when we add that magic E at the end. We've got one more magic E sound. When we have U consonant E, we say U. And for the E, if there's two E's together, they say E. These are all vowel teams. They work together to say one sound, even though there's two vowels making the sound. Let's look at the vowel digraphs we've learned so far. O I says oi. It's two vowels working together to make one sound. Two O's says oo. Two O's can also say uh, uh as in look. O U says ow. Remember, these are all two vowels that work together to make one sound. Here are our, our, our here are our, our controlled vowels. So when you see O-R, you hear OR. When you see E-R, you hear ER. When you see A-R, you hear R. Let's try those one more time because those are kind of tricky. They sound very similar. OR, ER, R. Great job. Keep on practicing those sounds. Soon you won't even have to think about it. Next we're going to look at some nouns and verbs. A noun is a person, place, or thing. Names a person, place, or thing. Like my name is Miss Jane, so that's a proper noun. What is a verb? A verb is the part of speech that shows action. 
and we talked about verbs being in the present tense now and the past tense. Already happened. Today we're going to circle the noun and put a little squiggle underneath the verb to show that it's an action because a squiggle shows movement. If you can't do that, just put an underline. That's okay too. So for example, we have the sentence, the frog swims. Frog is the noun. So I'm going to put a circle around frog. Swims is what he does. So I'm going to put a squiggle under the word swims. Now you're going to do the same thing on page 12.1 in your workbook. Let's take a look at that. We'll read these sentences together and then you'll come up with two sentences on your own. Number one, the pig snorts. And they circled pig for the noun and squiggled snorts for the verb. Number two, the dog barks. Circle the noun and put a squiggle underneath the verb. Number three, the car stops. Circle the noun and put a squiggle underneath the verb. Number four, the shark hunted. Circle the noun and put a squiggle under the verb. Number five, the man helps. Circle the noun and put a squiggle under the verb. I'll help you out with one example and then you can do one on your own. So write the number six and the sentence, the cat runs. Then circle the noun and underline the verb. Then write number seven and come up with a sentence on your own. Make sure the beginning of your sentence has a capital letter and the end of your sentence has a period. Next, we've got a new story for today. We're back in our The Green Fern Zoo reader. And today's story is going to be called Things with Wings. Things with Wings is on page 24. Let's look at some words we might come across today. Chick. Care. Care, rare, cute, use, north, born, some, there. Those are some tricky words. And some two syllable words. Puffin, until, woodland, getting. Remember, when we see two syllable words, we can take them in chunks and read the first part, then the second part, before we read the whole word. Let's look at our vocabulary words for today's story. First, we have puffin. A puffin is a bird that is black and white and has a large, colorful bill. And the next word is bill. The bill is the part of a bird's jaw that's used for breathing and eating. Finch, a small bird that lives in the forest or woodlands. Woodlands is just like a forest. Rare is something that is unusual or uncommon. Today we're reading the story, Things with Wings. 
and we're going to read to find out the names of two different animals with wings, what they look like, and what they like to eat. When we're finished reading today's story, you'll answer some questions about the chapter. Let's get into the story. Things with wings. Next, let's see some things with wings. Puffin. This is a puffin. He makes his home up north, not too far from the North Pole. What puffins look like? Look at those cute feet. But they are not just cute. The puffin's feet help him swim. Note, as well, his big bill. The puffin can use his bill to get fish. And the picture's caption says, puffins make their home by the North Pole. And if I scroll down here, you can see the bill, the colorful bill on that puffin. Oof. Got a lot of food on this one. How puffins are born. Puffins are born from eggs. The puffin mom and dad sit on their egg. The mom sits, then the dad sits. In the end, the chick pops out of the shell. The mom and dad take care of the chick until it can take care for itself. Look! That puffin has fish in her bill. She will feed those fish to her chick. And look again, all those fish inside that puffin's bill. And the caption says, the mom puffin will feed fish to her chick. The finch. In this next room, we have a finch. Unlike the puffin, the finch makes a home in the woodlands. He can use his bill to snap up grass seeds for food. I'm sad to tell you that the finch is getting to be quite rare. We are proud to have five of them here at the Green Fern Zoo. And the picture's caption says the finch makes its home in the woods. So the finch is getting rare. That means that there won't be too many. They'll be kind of hard to find. Let's talk about that story we just heard. Where does the puffin live? Well, we said the puffin lives near the North Pole. Do you know what the temperature is like at the North Pole? It's definitely not warm. It's very cold in the North Pole. What do puffins' feet help them to do? Their feet help them to swim. That's right. How do you think the puffin uses his big bill to get fish? His big bill can hold a lot of fish at once. That's super helpful, right? He might scoop them up in the water using his bill as a scoop. Number four, why do you think the mom and dad sit on the egg? They actually sit on the egg to keep it warm before it hatches. What things do you think a puffin must be able to do in order to take care of itself? Well, it's going to need to swim, right, to take care of itself. It's going to need to be able to use its bill to get its own food and probably find a home as well. Where does the finch live? The finch lives in the woodland, not the North Pole. And what does the finch like to eat? The finch eats grass seeds, that's right. And remember, we talked about how the finch is rare. That means that there aren't that many of them. 
The last thing you've got to do today is page 12.2 with the questions for today's chapter. It looks just like this. You've got three multiple choice questions, one fill in the blank question, and one question where you need to write a sentence to answer. Once you're finished with that, that's all we've got for today. Great work and I'll see you tomorrow.